Has anyone ever talked about or reported on sightings of these things underwater? Because there's there's hundreds of nuclear submarines circling the oceans right now that are just loaded with nukes. Well, that's a good question. And that's, you know, the the two people currently who are looking into that, you've got Richard Dolan's book. Yeah. His first book has come out. He's got two more coming out. Um, so the first book goes from antiquity back to, what, 1969, I think, is his first book. And the next mm -hmm. book will be in next 20 years or so. And then the third book will be more recent. Um, and you've got Admiral Timothy Gallaudet, who mm -hmm. wrote his white paper for the Seoul Foundation on submerged objects. Mm -hmm. I think that's the ignored aspect of UAPs. I mean, UFOs. The UFO, the focus has been on flying, but these things go underwater. Yeah, and under and, and the oceans are are less explored than the moon. We've yeah. explored, we we the I think we've less explored than Mars. Right. We know we know the surface of Mars better than we know the whole surface That's of Earth. That's crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah, That's right? insane to think about. Yeah. Like ten percent, I think, of the ocean floors that we mapped. Yeah. It's a water planet. I mean, we don't mm -hmm. really it's probably the most poorly named planet in the solar system, next to Uranus, perhaps. <laughs> right. Now. right. I mean it should just be called water or ocean. I mean, if right. you just I mean, for fun, just take a globe and hold it up so that you're looking at the Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. right? And it is literally the whole circle. Yeah. It's a water planet. One whole side of it is completely One whole ocean. side of it is just ocean. Yeah. It's really amazing when mm -hmm. you can see, you know, and for anybody who's flown from Los Angeles to Australia or New Zealand, you're really aware of that because it's yeah. 12 hours, mm -hmm. you look out the window and it's still water. Even halfway to Hawaii. And, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we don't know what's under there. Mm -hmm. We really don't. It's really pretty remarkable. Well, you know, it is a, wa a majority, a water planet, but like us, we are the most intelligent life form that we know of that exists here. We're this upright bipedal hominid that has evolved, obviously, to survive on Earth. <clears throat> And a lot of these things that we see, a lot of these reports of like beings and stuff, they all look just like us, bipedal, upright, walking hominids. And if they came from some other planet, like what are the chances that they would evolve to look just like us, right? Like I think we're one of one of two million cataloged species on the earth and there's 20 hominids and out of the 20 various variations of hominids, we're one of the 20. So we're like 0.001% of living beings on this earth. And we've the we're the only one that has been able to figure out how to communicate beyond our Earth and d develop technology to be able to leave the Earth. So, like just just calculating how rare we are on planet Earth, like we haven't even been able to find life on other planets, let alone life that evolved to look exactly like the point zero zero one percent of life on this Earth. So, like, what is the percentage of of I don't know if you know the answer to this, but like out of all of the planets that are habitable are able to inhabit life how, how many of them have are just complete water worlds or have more water than we have ah uh, that's a good question I, we know that about 20 percent of the planets 20 percent of the star systems have a planet in what we call the habitable zone where you could have where the temperature is right to have liquid water 20 percent 20 percent of the stars so go out tonight count out five stars one of those stars has a planet in the right place to be able to have liquid water right okay um, whether it's a rocky planet or a gas planet you know you, you don't know and and mm -hmm. so it might not be habitable right but it's in what we call the habitable zone mm -hmm. um and water is very common and very probably many of the terrestrial worlds have have oceans mm -hmm. or are water worlds in some way i mean venus used to have an ocean we know that now my friend mike way who's at nasa who i met when i went to first oh, went really? to NASA. michael way studies venus and um he's a, he's probably the ex venus expert and so used to have green oceans Beautiful green oceans. I would wow. love to see something like that. How long ago? Um, a lot before it got hot, before the the runaway global warming. So the runaway global warming. Yeah. Does so, he have any ideas of like? I don't know what the time periods were, no. but it's it's billions of years ago. Yeah. Whoa. But yeah. So and 
so Venus is interesting that way. Mars used to have liquid water. We know mm -hmm. that too. And so, and we know many of the current, you know, moons around Jupiter have oceans under ice, right? So Europa has an ice crust with a 60 mile deep ocean underneath. So a lot of them are ocean worlds. And you could easily imagine that um, with ocean worlds being so prevalent, um, anybody able to come here, if you had life evolve on another planet that could be interstellar stellar capable and could come to Earth, um, they might very well be from an ocean world, mm -hmm. in which case our oceans aren't going to be that different from their oceans. Mm -hmm. Atmospheres are horrible. Um, you don't want to... We live on a surface with an atmosphere. It's a really pretty crappy place to live because, as you know, the environment changes every day. Yeah. Right? That Yesterday it's cold and rainy. Today it's bright and sunny, mm -hmm. right? And and warm. Um, but atmospheres, the temperature can sh the temperature changes dramatically mm -hmm. um, day by day, even, even within a day. Um, but if you go from planet to planet, it's extremely different. So you go look at Venus, you've got... A hundred times the air pressure on Earth, which would crush you, and you've got a carbon dioxide atmosphere. The chemicals are different. Carbon dioxide atmosphere, and it's about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. I mean, when I, when I was working at Ames, it was when the Magellan probe was studying Venus with radar, and one of the big mysteries that came up then was that the mountain tops in v on Venus became radar reflective when it got cold. So when it got to like when the temperatures dropped to like 600 degrees or something yeah. like this, when it got cold on Venus, on the mountaintops, they would become radar reflective. You couldn't figure this out until they figured out it was snow. It was what? lead and bismuth snow. They had metal snowflakes. What? Snow, so vaporized lead and vaporized bismuth in the atmosphere would crystallize and form snowflakes and fall on the mountaintops. You have metal on the mountaintops, covering metal snowflakes covering mountaintops that's amazing mm. that that's what a cold day in hell looks like <laughs> yeah <laughs> right <laughs> that's really wow. pretty amazing i would love to see that um but not with a hundred yeah. atmospheres right. of pressure that's right. horrible so venus is a horrible place to live and then you go to mars and you've got you're what about 100 degrees below zero fahrenheit mm. right and you've got one one hundredth of the air pressure so you need a spacesuit mm. So atmospheres vary dramatically, but if you look at an ocean, um, an ocean the pressure is only going. The pressure changes um, one atmosphere every thirty-two feet, right? Yep. So you're uh -huh. going to you go down thirty-two feet. You're at two atmospheres. You know you'd have to go down three thousand feet. Basically, our oceans are only about five thousand feet deep. So you go down about five thousand feet. You're looking at. Um, you know, several hundred atmospheres, a thousand atmospheres, right? On the order of a thousand atmospheres or an order of a hundred, hundred atmospheres. So it's about, so by the bottom of our oceans, the mm -hmm. air pressure, the water pressure is about the same as the air pressure on the surface of Venus. Right. Similar, close. Right. Um, we're, I'm talking orders of magnitude here. Mm -hmm. And so all you'd need to do is to get the pressure right, you just go down to the right depth and you'll have the pressure you want, right? Mm -hmm. And water is always between zero or between zero and 100 degrees centigrade or between 32 and 212 Fahrenheit, right? So otherwise it isn't liquid water, right? Oh, so it's, right. So the temperatures don't vary dramatically, but atmospheres they do. On Venus, it's 800 degrees. On Mars, it's 100 degrees below. So you've got so a the, thousand so degrees in temperature difference. So no matter what the, planet you're on, liquid water is going to be gonna relatively be almost the same. the same <laughs> everywhere. The, the biggest difference is really going to be the chemical constituents or biology. Yes. Biological um, bacteria or something, which could be bad for you. Oh, that's fascinating. That's the only difference. So, so going from one water world to another would be easy. And in fact, if I was an interstellar traveler preparing to just make a home on another planet and another star system I've never been to, I would bring equipment to live underwater. Mm. Because if I would build, I would bring the, you know, what's needed to set up a home underwater. And that's where I'd make my home. It would be the best place. You're shielded from radiation. You're shielded from my, um, meteorite impacts. You're shielded mm -hmm. from all these things. A lot of protective shielding. Well, oceans are great places to live. Mm. Wow. Yeah, and and 
you know, if we've been seeing these things come out of the water since antiquity, you know, they, these things have probably been here for probably thousands and or hundreds of thousands of years before those first sightings. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, it's really inter It's really hard to wrap your head around. And and like, do you? Because there's there's a few theories, uh, accepted theories of of what these things could be. And one of them, you know, obviously you have like the interstellar traveling species from another star system. You have uh, interdimensional or that you have like the time travelers or and then you have the simulation. Right. Right. Um, and I think the simulation, the time traveling thing kind of like works together too, right? Because if you had some civilization that was far in the future, they could sort of like develop some sort of simulation and that we exist inside of or something like something like this. Um, but like <clears throat> if there, if you wanted to survive some sort of cataclysm, you would have the best chance of surviving it underwater as well. If something happened on earth, like some sort of nuclear event or some sort of cosmic event happened where, you know, there was massive flooding or like an ice, ice age, something like this. Big solar flares. Yeah. You want to be underwater. You would want to be underwater. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oceans are great places to be. Thank <laughs> you.